the last video really popped off. Uh, you know, that video was kind of targeted towards the typed community, like people who are already in this ecosystem. So I guess for a lot of you, it's kind of confusing. Like, how do you use this in the real world? So today, I'm going to show you how I've used types in my university work to write some reports and do some notes. So I have for you today uh, three examples. I have a very boring answer sheet, like notes with math syntax. And I have a little bigger project, like hand-in assignments with a single style sheet and multiple uh, output files. And finally, I have an actual published paper. So this is my bachelor's thesis from this spring. What do we have here? So it's just a tip file and an image. Let's look at the source code. So at the very top, we just set the font and that we get straight to business. That's it. There's no more preamble. So if you really want to keep the document lean, it's very easy to do so. And how does this look rendered? Instead of using types preview, because some of you guys were actually confused. Is this like a web framework or is this a PDF compiler? No, this replaces LaTeX. So it compiles to PDF and SVG actually. But there are actually efforts in the pipeline to make types able to compile to HTML. But it's very early stage right now, I think. So this is the command line interface of types. You just type uh, types, compile, and then the input file. And it will default to PDF output, but you can choose the format with SVG or PNG or PDF. But we don't need to specify that right now. And there, we have a compiled PDF. Uh, did you notice how fast that was? That's really nice. So under a second. <laughs> so let's look at it. I think you would notice that it's not made in Word or Google Docs, but I don't think you would notice that it's not made in LaTeX. So that's a very simple example. Let's step it up a notch with a project that has many figures. It actually has a references file. We have a references.bib. That's a LaTeX thing. That's because Types doesn't fully reinvent the wheel. You can actually use bib files for your references. And there is actually a more minimal way to do references using YAML files with Types. But you can pick and choose. Here I have actually five reports written with the same templates. So how do the actual individual reports look? Well, they're quite simple. This is the preamble. So we just import the style from this tip file. And then we use the style globally. And then we get straight down to business. So it's very <laughs> meat heavy. And how does this look? Oh, and you see I'm actually missing a font. But it's very nice and pointing it out to me. So let's try to install that font first maybe. Maybe not that interesting. It has figures, it has sub-figures, and it has math. Do we have anything more interesting in the other handings? Now here's a very quick way to just compile all the types files using FD. I love this command. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, maybe a bit interesting. You can do a code listing with syntax highlighting, it just works. So this is a Python code embedded in a figure. These figures are fully SVG, so it's all vector graphics, no raster graphics used here. So all of these uh, hand-ins are using a common template. How does that actually look? So this template was actually created by the course examiner at Linköping University. So big shout out to Erik Frisk. And I believe the reason that he started using it was because he heard it from Franz Skarman. And I really recommend to read the Franz Skarman's blog post about how he wrote his own PhD thesis in types. It's really amazing. <laughs> And there's a link to it in the description. What is a type's template or a style? Well, it's just a function where you can declare any name parameters for the user of this template and it has to take one positional argument that is actually the body, like the contents of the page. And then inside the function body, you just do all the set and show commands you want to make your style work. And then finally, you need to have the body somewhere. A lot of the time, you just do all the stuff, the set commands, maybe you want to generate the title page, and then you give the body. That means if you want to generate a references page or like a footer, you can do it here after the body. Now finally, let's look at my bachelor's thesis. And here we have a lot of documents. So it's actually just this one that is the actual bachelor's thesis. Uh, the other files were just internal documents that we used in the group. I was a big proponent of using types, but a lot of people were skeptical about it and wanted to use like LaTeX and Overleaf, of course. But we did actually settle on types and I think people were actually very happy with it. So this is the biggest file I've shown you yet. This is around 1051 lines. And it's even more than that because we use an external style document. So it's, yeah, around 2000 lines. If we compile it, we're missing a font again. Now we have PT Sans installed, so let's go. Okay, that took a bit more time actually. Let's look at it. So this actually takes around a second to compile. 
But how many pages is this? This is 50 pages. And it has a custom header there with a the logo. Uh, it has a bunch of references, figures. It has an abstract. And we automatically generate the table of contents. It has hyperlinks. You can press them to jump to exactly the heading. And this list of all the figures and the pages are also automatically generated. The same here for all the tables. It starts to add up. This really can boost your productivity. Now, I know probably a lot of this, or maybe most of this, can be done in LaTeX. It's just, I just think that the LaTeX syntax is so much uglier and it doesn't really inspire you to do this stuff. And of course, it's a lot slower to compile. But, one second, that's not so impressive, is it? There's a lot of LaTeX documents that can be compiled in like two or one second, so it's not a big deal. Well, check this out. Instead of doing typed compile, which just compiles the PDF one time, you can use typed watch. It will keep the compiler hot for you and just recompile every time the file changes. And that's a lot faster than doing it cold every time. Now, I have typed watch open here. And I have the PDF opened. Now let's say we edit this uh, abstract a bit. Boom! You see? It's still a couple of milliseconds. But if you really want to make this fast, then you use something called TinyMist, which has very nice connections to NeoVim, VS Code, I think Helix too. But you can just use the TinyMist as a command line utility too. So if you use the TinyMist Previewer, it's a lot faster. But it's a bit different. So the way TinyMist does this is it actually renders uh, to a web page, which is kind of weird. But my guess is that it's easier to like diff and patch the document if it's a web page instead of a full PDF rewrite. But don't quote me on that. Now in my experience, TinyMist CLI has a bit of a problem detecting when NeoVim updates the file. So it's much better to use the integrated extension types preview. That really works well for me. And this NeoVim plugin has a lot of features too. Like you can get the same experience as an overleaf where you click text and it actually jumps you to the source code. And the reverse too. You can jump to a paragraph here and it will jump you to the render text here. And you can see now the text, the preview is nearly instant. So that's awesome. And I think to wrap this up, I just cannot understate how fast types is. I have here a top level make file, which will just find all the types files and compile them. So now if we do make dash j, we can do as many jobs as possible in parallel. Dude, that was 20 documents in like, how long was that? That's 20 documents in under 2 seconds, unheard of. I will push this code to my GitHub, so check out the link in the description and have fun!